Well, Eatonville is not an imposing landmark like the Grand Canyon or the Empire State Building or Monticello. The fact that Eatonville still exists as a continuously inhabited town, the fact that all of Hurston's work was fed by her having grown up in that town, internalizing the dialect, the characters, the independent spirit, all of those factors, I believe, make it a place worth studying. Thinking about these places as being beacons to Black communities and Black people looking for a space for autonomy and away from the racist violence. Uh, Because at this time, too, they consider themselves, they are African Americans. Um, This is not this is also their home. Not everyone necessarily agrees with that. And some people, you know, you have movements, uh, back to Africa movements, uh, for, but, but for those who have, have um, acknowledged that they are to be here in the South or in the space, and it may necessarily, you know, later migrate North, some do, some don't, um, this is their home and, and they built this country, uh, right? But they also necessi- don't necessarily want to deal with racial violence uh, and they build their own autonomy. So, you know, Miles Davis says, uh, play what is in there, right? Play what is in there, right? He, he, he theorizes about, you know, that he wants to, in his, in his jazz, he wants to get to, to sort of like the spaces in between, right? The interstices, right? What's in between? What's, what's not so obvious, so apparent, right? So there's a lot of places that are, as we know, historically Black, but a lot of times we don't pay attention to them in the way that the people who live there want us to. Um, we pick and pull different parts of history. We, we pick exceptional moments. Um, but a lot of times we don't think about how they view themselves and what our perception of them does to and affects them as well. Um, I think there's a difference between preserving history and also wanting people to um, respect that history and engage in the future. And you can do those things collectively without having people erase your history, if that makes sense. Um, Because I think erasure does not have to necessarily mean um, and go hand in hand with change. Changing a space, um, change is natural, it occurs, we can't help it. Um, But how it looks, how that future looks should be determined by the people who are willing to not only invest in that community, but work to make it a better place um, and make it the place that that it's meant to be. Uh, And that's a place that is full of history, community engagement, caring, um, a place that has lost so many things because people who have come in chose to help ch- help change it didn't necessarily change it in the best interest of the town's people. There is still very much that sense of pride in the and in, in in the roots and the um, and a sense of cultural grounding um, in the place and what it took for these you know, these 21 families to decide in the midst of like, I mean, it it were race wars, right? I mean, this, you know, black people were being lynched. They were dying. They were, you know, um, just up the road, you know, Rosewood, right? I mean, it happens a few years, you know, decades later, but still, right? Towns, black towns disappearing, you know, people getting burnt out. Um, And, and, and they had the audacity to say, "We're going to incorporate. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to, we're going to run ourselves. We're going to be a government, you know, unto ourselves and 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 incorporate, you know, um, this town." I, I think it's powerful. It's a powerful story. Also, recognizing that Edenville is one of several historically black towns and spaces. I think it's a gateway when starting with the first one to push students to learn about other places, some that may be within their own town or community if they're not from, you know, this part of central Florida, but maybe a different state. What other historical places are they not aware of? What other historical places can they engage with that used to exist or still exist today? And what does that mean, whether they've been erased or they've been ignored? We would do well to recall that history and to think about um, the blood, the sweat, you know, the terrors, the folk on whose on whose shoulders we stand. Um, and um, when we when you know some some when some 
um, are not as incensed perhaps as they should be or as active as they should be on behalf of, of Black voting rights and enfranchisement. Um, it, is, it is not something that we could take for granted then and still not something we can take for granted now. That struggle continues, um, but we stand on the shoulders of that folk and it is to them um, that, that we owe our, our, um, our best efforts uh, to deliver on the yet to be fulfilled promise of full freedom, of uh, you know, full liberation, full access, full inclusion, all of it. Mm -hmm.